Hey people, what's happening? Welcome to the Run Testers and today we're going to be looking at this. This is the OnCloud Surface 6. It's the sixth generation of this original shoe that carried On's trademark cloud pods. Now On says that this shoe sticks to that original DNA and aims to provide the comfort of a training shoe with the speed of a racing flat. So does it live up to that billing? Well, we've given it the run tester treatment and in this video, we're gonna tell you. Quick specs then, well, it's a fairly weighty 335 grams or 12 ounces. It has an 11 mil drop and it comes in at 135 pounds in the UK or $149.99 in the US. Onto the design details and on says this latest cloud surfer is built for high comfort and high speed on the road from 5k up to the half marathon. The midsole has a three part system. There's a double layer of EVA zero gravity foam with extra cushioning at the heel and that's designed to improve impact protection for softer landings. There's a polypropylene speed board sandwiched in the midsole and that's tuned for speed and punchier takeoff. And there's a full rebound rubber outsole that's also there to add to the responsive feel but also beef up the durability. And that's all finished off with a heel counter built into the midsole for extra support. The uppers are made from a ventilated engineered mesh and that's fairly dense but offers support without the need for overlays. And there's this quite interesting wraparound tongue a design we've not seen before and that's supposed to reduce lace pressure and up the overall comfort of the shoe. And that tongue and the heel collars featured mid-level padding. Fit then, and despite the fact that these are actually, I think, a little bit narrower than some shoes, I ran true to size in these in a UK eight and a half, that is my size, and that was fine. They fitted well, I had to sort of work them in a little bit. They are one shoe that I had to put on. They felt a little bit tight initially, but after a couple of big long runs, they started to loosen off and feel good. So I think I would recommend if you've Got, unless you've got really wide feet, I would go true to size. So I've done well over 50 miles in these shoes across a mixture of terrains and a mixture of paces. Quite a large proportion of those have been either at kind of cruiser pace or a little bit below it, kind of a bit more of a long plod. I've done it some mainly on tarmac, some on kind of gravel paths that I usually run. Now, the minute you put these on, there's good step in comfort, but the other thing you notice is that they're instantly kind of more lively underfoot than a lot of on shoes that I've tested recently. You get a lot more compression release from these pods, and that is something that I think makes these for a bit more of a springy run than I've had from a lot of on shoes recently. Though it's fair to say that like most on shoes, these are definitely at the firmer end of the scale. And I think it would be a bit unfair to sort of characterize them anywhere near the sort of the bouncy springy kind of energetic ride that you might get from a, something like a Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. They're not really in that ballpark. And even though On has kind of pegged these as potential racers up to a half marathon distance, I don't think you're going to get anything like the punchy response that you're going to get from something like the new Nike Street Fly. Again, they're not really near that. Having said that, I have enjoyed all the runs that I've done in these. That's perhaps because I like a firmer shoe with a bit more ground contact. That's something you definitely get here. There is good road feel on these with just a little bit of a, of a kick under step when those pods kind of release and bounce back. I also think there's fairly good stability on these shoes. So if you like that kind of feeling where you're, you're sort of a little bit closer to the ground, you can feel a little bit more of the road underfoot, then this shoe might be for you. Now, the other thing to say is that they're not a light shoe. They're 100 grams heavier than something like the Speed 2, and you definitely kind of feel that weight on the foot when you're running long. So even though you've got this kind of narrow base underfoot, that I think makes them sort of feel a little bit more agile and nimble on the foot than their weight suggests. For me, these still kind of slip into that cruiser shoe role. I don't think I would be sort of taking them out to race a half marathon. I certainly wouldn't be going up to the, the full marathon. In. They're actually kind of another shoe that I would just happily take out on a progression run where you you know, you know you might be starting at a kind of slower pace and you're going to want to kick up to sort of some more of your sort of paces that are getting near to the top end of your pacing. And as I said earlier in the fit, this wraparound tongue, though it's really interesting, it sort of rolls over the top of the foot and hugs the foot really nicely. It did take a little bit of wearing in. When I first put it on, I did feel there's a little bit of sort of cramped here, but that seems to sort of stretch. I work with the laces and, and it loosened off and got more comfortable the more runs I put in. And then I, I really like that kind of sweep over. It does sort of, I think, hold the foot really nicely. Though if you're not a big fan of something like a gusseted tongue or that kind of enclosed feel, then maybe again, you won't like this overall feel. But for me, I think it helped kind of reduce any kind of lace pressure and gave them a nice sort of snug feel across the top of the foot, get, enabled me to get a really good lockdown. On the durability front, after 50 miles, there's not a huge amount of wear to the clouds, which can be the case sometimes with on shoes. There's a little bit at the back, but nothing major. And yes, if you're wondering, looking at these channels here, they do still catch stones.
So on to the verdict then, and I think this is actually one of the best on shoes that I've run in recently. And that's because these kind of clouds underneath are a little bit more springy. There's a little bit more excitement and liveliness underfoot than I've had from a lot of the ons that I've tested recently. But that kind of liveliness is also sort of balanced out by maintaining quite a nice kind of ground contact feel. You do feel connected and that's something I personally like in a shoe. You know, ons uppers I think and overall kind of foot feel tend to be spot on. They sort of disappear often quite nicely. They're quite comfortable from the first time you put them on. And I think that they kind of tick a box here once you've sort of broken them in a little bit actually on these. The overall kind of upper comfort is good and it makes them sort of feel, there's enough padding here to make them feel a little bit like a, you know, a sort of happy cruiser for me. Now the main problem here is that I think they're a little bit too heavy to be like a serious shorter distance kind of 5k to half marathon racer. They're a little bit too firm I think to be something that you consider taking up to the marathon. I think a lot of people will find them too firm underfoot and a little bit too stiff. And that kind of also I think discounts them from being most people's sort of top choice as something like a daily trainer as well. So they're falling between a few gaps here, unfortunately. Now this is another shoe that I'm perfectly happy to go out and kind of plod around in, run around in, do some different kind of workouts in. It's, you know, it's comfortable enough, but actually I think when you put them in line up against some competition and shoes that are starting to be sort of targeted at very specific jobs, I think they don't really compare all that well. You know, if you're looking for a really good versatile daily trainer that can actually go faster as well, then I think, you know, we mentioned it a lot on the channel, but the Socony Endorphin Speed 2 has such good versatility and it's only sort of 20 pounds more expensive than this shoe, which I think is kind of slightly highly priced. So a good shoe, I've enjoyed running in it, there are some things that I really like, the uppers, you know, it's quite lively, but it's kind of falling between some gaps. And I think it's quite hard to recommend it when it's against some of the competition that's out there at the moment. So there you have it, that's my verdict on the OnCloud Surface 6. Hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. We'll be happy to answer those. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for other reviews that are coming out on the channel. It's got a lot of big shoe launches coming up on the channel soon that we know you're gonna to wanna to hear about. So if you hit the bell, you will be notified when those land. Thanks as ever for watching. We hope you've enjoyed the review. And yeah, we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers.